why don't we get into our next set here? We're going to be moving on to a PVZ this time. Got it. So we'll be able to know a little bit more about what we're talking about, hopefully. Now, um, this is a bit interesting of a PVZ. Uh, I'll, I'll introduce my the players first, and then we can get into that. But so spawning here in the on the left side of Tower Cross, we have from Team Beast, Desmond Juju. And then here on the bottom, we have our yellow Protoss, Crackery. And now, what's interesting about this is Crackery is actually a Zerg player normally. Um, but he's playing Protoss okay. because he had to sub in for somebody. Oh. Uh, yeah, so Scientology Vessel couldn't, uh, their player couldn't make it or something. So uh, Crackery came and subbed in, but the player was Protoss. So mm -hmm. he actually had to play as Protoss. So we'll have to see how these games go, and I know Desmond is normally a Zerg. So, I mean, just based on that, you may favor him. Right, yeah. I mean, but. that's pretty unfortunate. So Crackery doesn't play Poros at all? Like, he's not even, like, a, a race picker? No. As far as I know, he's just full-on Zerg main. Oh, that's rough. But he had to play Protoss. Oh, because hey, this probe, is, this probe is not making a pilot at the net. Uh, mm. It's taking a walk. Uh, oh, my he's God. Actually He's no, actually, he has 200 minerals and he's supply blocked. Um, this is pretty... He's probably going to, yeah, proxy something. So if you're going to do a proxy, you want to send out the probe earlier than 9 of 9. Because you right. saw he built that pile when he had like 250 minerals or something. Definitely a little light. Yeah, so already, right off the bat, we can see that maybe, um, you know, Protoss isn't so used to... Some of the mechanics particular to this race um, but he is throwing down two gateways in the middle of the map um, yeah i mean possible he can do something with it there's no yeah. school there's no spawning pool yet yeah i mean <laughs> if you don't know the race that well i mean i guess cheesing is they're doing something you know super aggressive like this could definitely work uh because you're probably not favored in a longer game especially if you don't know the builds or how the mechanics of the race works yeah so Interestingly uh, enough, the Overlord and the, the drone, they're all going to miss these gateways yeah. in the middle of the map. Which, so, um, pretty fortunate. There's, there's actually still... Okay, the spawning pool is now finally coming down. Uh, we, the first Zealot hasn't started yet, even though the gateway's been done. Both of the gateways are done, and I see no Zealot started. Oh, that's... Okay, now they're starting. A little late again. If those were started sooner, if the pylon was put down on time and the gates were started on time... Uh, they, I mean, the Zealots would probably be arriving at the base around now. Did did Desmond send that drone all the way into the main? Did he see there was nothing here for Protoss? I, I missed it. I saw him go around the area of like the choke. I'm not sure if he actually went all the way in. Um, but so, it seems like the way he's moving his Overlord, I'm assuming he actually didn't scout it. But we'll have to see. So we'll see. Um, but the fact that he didn't see a fa forge fast expand or a fast expand of any kind at either base should give him a heads up like, okay, there could be something aggressive coming, like, a, you know, two gate or something, some zealots early, and here they are now. So now he definitely knows, okay, this is two gate, there's zealots showing up, Let's see how, what his response is. Yeah, this is, this is pretty problematic. Oh, the, the drone was blocked and couldn't put the creep colony down. And the fact that there's two probes here to support these zealots is so critical. I mean, oh wait, <laughs> they might get picked off fast, but um, by having this extra probe do that extra five damage, a zealot can two shot a zergling. So it's it's pretty key that this is staying alive and doing damage. Yeah. So two zealot hits and one probe hit will kill a zergling instead of three zealot hits. It just helps you like kill the zerglings a little bit faster. Um, but yeah, make letting that sunken get up is not good now that there's two sunkens up he's pretty well defended like he sh shouldn't be able to do any damage here with these zealots looks like he's going to continue to make some but he's going to fall behind now like, i don't think desmond is going to be you know too worried about this he's starting a lair it looks like he's going to go for a two hatch layer build of some sort i don't mind that Kill him with some tech of some kind. Yeah, so at this point, I'm not sure what the follow-up is for the Protoss. He has a forge, and he built a core, but there's no gas. 
<laughs> so I mean, the the core is gonna be completely useless. Yeah, he won't be able to make dragoons or any tech off of that without any gas. Again, that probably comes down to him not being a Protoss player and not knowing Protoss. Yeah, so props to him for being able to jump in for his team like that and and uh, and sub in. That is uh, pretty cool. Yeah, like good for him for off racing and you know avoiding uh, their team getting walked over. A bit unfortunate for him, but. Oh, what is this? We have a pylon coming outside the base too. Is he going to try and cannon contain him or something? Oh my god. Because, <laughs> I mean, he does have this forge. <laughs> There's also a Ling harassing some probes here in the mineral line. It did pick off at least one. Yeah, luckily there's a cannon. Um, I don't know, to be honest. I think if Desmond just goes for Muta, right? He can completely ignore this. This yeah. uh, cannon contained at the front. But The cannons? Does he even see it yet? No, he doesn't even know it's there at the moment. Uh, the cannons will be able to like kill his hatchery. Okay, he sees something building now. Well, let's see. I mean, this is kind of a weird game. He's going to try and put this creep colony down and make a sunken. But these cannons are going to be done way before that. Yeah, hopefully the sunken isn't in range. Or the cannon isn't in range of the sunken. We'll see. Man, it the is. cannon can it. Oh, man. I'm actually surprised that other cannon isn't shooting the the hatchery there. I thought it would, but maybe it's just out of range. This is actually looking pretty dangerous for Desmond. Like with this cannon support and all these zealots, Crackery could definitely take this game. Yeah, and I mean there are two sunkens here, but if all these zealots just walk right by straight into the main, Desmond is in so much trouble. But he's just gonna go for this hatchery? What? He's backing out. Okay. I mean, oh my God. Yeah, these sunkins aren't properly positioned, and they're not going to defend this hatchery. Oh man. And if this hatchery does go down, it's going to open up like such an easy path for these zealots to walk straight into the base. Yeah. And it's like so inefficient for Desmond to even attack these zealots because of this cannon support. So it's like quite an interesting strategy, but it seems to be working. Yeah, definitely. This is this is really weird. I didn't expect it to, to be like this. I thought the nine nine was, it, I thought it failed, but the follow up was uh pretty creative to say the least. Yeah, he gets the hatchery. Uh, what are we in? He does. The spire is finished, so he can start making some mutas now. He hasn't made any yet. Oh, yeah, he's just starting a couple. But these out. What? Okay, the zealots are now walking into the main. They could just kill all the tech here. Yeah, this is he's, not oh, good. And he's gonna build another pylon in the base. What is going on? Oh, he's probably gonna is... build some more cannons here. Wow. You know, Crackery may not uh, may not main Protoss, but I can tell you, he has the the true heart of a Protoss teaser. I like it. <laughs> he's really captured the essence of proper Protoss play. Yeah. Oh, now with <laughs> this is rough for Desmond, but Desmond still has higher supply. Yeah, and with these mutas out now, like Jeez. the Protoss zealots are on a time limit. There He's are not seven specific... mining probes, Snape. There are set eight mining probes. Eight probes. Oh, nine he never probes. made a single probe during any of this. Mm. That's a... I guess he's used to playing Zerg, playing on the low economy, right? So he's gonna lose all these zealots, and now all of a sudden he's got these mutas. And nothing to really kill the Zerg with. Uh, so I mean, these at this point, these mutas could just fly across the map, you know, pick off that pylon power in the gateways, and, or just go kill. There's the another pylon in the base. Yeah, he, he is gonna <laughs> scout it. Oh my god! <laughs> but there's no probe left around here. Yeah, so one cannon in the base. This muta counter is just gonna absolutely wreck. As long as he goes straight, straight to the base. Yeah. If he Picks off these cannons. It's oh, where's he going now? Okay. <laughs> Desmond, make up his mind, please. Send him back. So he's remaking his pool at the natural. I mean, the longer uh, he waits, he's he's, he's, he's gonna have more cannons to fight. So. Yeah, he's giving Crackery some more time. He's buying time for these cannons to finish and help back up these mutas. <laughs> oh my god. So usually when you see cannons like not morphed yet, you should probably just go for them. Or in this case, like take out the cannon that is done and then go 
right. right away and then go for those ones that are still morphing. We got a Dragoon coming out and another Zealot from these gateways. Oh my god, yeah, this... Desmond's gonna lose his spawning pool. What is going on? Again. Jesus. He's wow. rebuilding it. Yeah, so it's good. He's staying on top of that. Oh, man. I mean, Wait. we don't... Oh. <laughs> Desmond built another hatchery, but the Sunkins, again, aren't in range to properly defend it. Oh, man. I mean, I don't think Desmond realizes how far ahead he is. Yeah, maybe. for real. Like, he could just kill the Protoss with his Mutus, but he's just going to play it safe. He's going to kill the cannons outside his base instead. Oh, no. He actually lost a lot of Mutas there. Yeah. He's still making a couple of more, couple more Mutas. Yeah, but I, I understand think... though, because from you know Desmond's point of view, he's been defensive this entire game, right? So oh it's, yeah, it's really sure. difficult to to kind of gauge like when your opponent kind of goes too deep and they give you an advantage. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we can see everything that's going on, so we're like, okay, yeah, Desmond's quite far ahead. There's nothing a cracker he can really do. But from Desmond's point of view, he's probably like, okay, this guy's put on so much pressure. I've taken a lot of damage. You know, like I gotta just defend, right? Don't want to like have my units out of position and just die. Yeah, well, it was a good effort by but, Crackery. Um, but yeah, the supplies right now, they tell the story, right? I mean, it's fifty to ten. Yeah, he's got five probes mining in his base. Yeah, none on yes. And he's still building another pylon out here in the middle of the map. I'm interested to see the next game because it seems like you know Crackery's not too um. He's not too well versed in what like how a PVZ should look. But his control with the Zealots and stuff, it was pretty strong. So I'm hoping maybe, I don't think he'll win this game, but maybe the next game, he'll also go for another you know, aggressive build. And a random cannon here in the middle of the map by this two games. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't give up, which is which is good. Um, I mean, he's putting it in, uh, the ball's in Desmond's court, right, to end the game. So. And he might just do that with all these middleists in the base. There's not much <laughs> cracking. He's turning them all away again. Desmond, what are you doing? <laughs> I think he sees this random cannon being built and a couple of dragoons, so he's gonna like I don't want, you know, him to make a bunch of cannons here and push into my base or something. I'm just gonna take it out now. Honestly he cracker he should probably just leave once he loses this anyway. GG. Okay, yep, there's, there's a GG. GG. Yeah, I mean, good defense by Desmond. Um, I'm I'm still impressed by Crackery. I mean, he's not a Protoss player, but he he did a really good um a, a good attempt. At a nine nine. That was game. a that was a interesting game. Like different kind of a strategy, but it was working there for a while. Like it it looked really strong. I thought he was gonna win that game, but yeah. he was Desmond smart. managed to hold out. I liked I liked what he was doing with his zealots. Like you looked at the control and you're like, oh wow, this guy knows what he's doing. Um, at least in terms of micro. So maybe Crack is like a, a UMS player or something. Because his micro seemed really good. All right, I'm interested to see this game now. We jump in uh, game number two of these two. See if we see another kind of cheese, or maybe he'll try some kind of forge opening this time. Yeah. Well, I mean, match point. I think it's a pretty good map like to cheese on if, if you're looking to cheese because obviously it's a two-player map you know exactly whether your opponent's gonna be spawning right so I wouldn't be surprised if there was some sort of proxy two gate coming out of crackery again this game yeah I'd like to if he is gonna do that I'd like to see him send that first probe a little bit sooner than he did last time yeah. like now would be good time to send your first probe and then it would be, get to to be know. honest now that I think about it had he sent the probe earlier and built a pylon at 100 minerals instead of 200, like the gates would have been out that much quicker. And who knows what could have happened then. Yeah, and he was a bit slow starting his zealots too. Yes. Yeah. When the gateways finished. So if he started those on time, you know, those zealots would have been there earlier. Yeah, but I guess, you know, let's move on into to this game where we basically have uh, the same players as last game. We have Crackery as the red Protoss spawning up in top right. And in the bottom left-hand corner, we have Desmond Tutu. Blue Zerg from Team Beast, yes. That's right. Uh, so right away, there's a pylon here in the main. He's not doing a forge fast expand. 
Okay, I wonder if that... He is actually putting a pile on his main, so he might see something a little more normal-ish. I don't want to say normal, because I mean, the most common thing we see nowadays is Forge Fast Expand and PVZ. But he could do a one-gate tech or a two-gate build. Uh, he's actually building a Forge in the main. What? Oh, maybe he's trying to cannon rush? Uh, he's also scouting top left with that first probe. Yeah, I don't know what Cracker is doing. Does he, is he, does he not know the map? Does he think this is the spot? Yeah, I think he thinks it's still a four-player map or something. Well, he's I just mean, uh, scout top left, right? Yeah, well, luckily for Desmond, after that 99, uh, you know, the 99 gate shenanigans from last game, he opened up a, a bit safer. He went for the overpool build. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, there's not going to be much to cannon rush. He's actually scouting with his drone, I think. Unless he's just planning on taking this as a third. You know, scouting around to see if there's any proxies. He doesn't want, you know, to run into that kind of problem again. Yeah, look, look, look at it. Yeah. All right, and so, we do have a pylon. Unfortunately for Crackery, though, like, Zerglings are going to pop yeah. soonish. So there's four Zerglings on the way soon. Um, I think they should be in time to stop any uh, any sort of weird ideas. That cracker you might have. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cracker's building two cannons in his base. This is... Like, if he's going to go for the strategy, he might as well build all of that stuff at the front, wall off, and, you know, he's safe to take an expo. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, I don't think this is going to work. The Zoggings are already out. Cannon's... Not even 75% done. Yeah. Like, these lings are gonna... Only two of them are attacking the cannon, but it's still just gonna go down. <laughs> he tries rebuild... Oh, no, it's a pylon. He tried building the block the lings out. Yeah. <laughs> Ended up trapping the probe in with the lings, but... Yeah. You know what? I, I, got, I gotta give Crackery props. Um, he went into this game knowing that, you know, maybe he's not as familiar with PvZ, so he tried to end the games um, as fast as possible. So... You know, I respect yeah. that. Yeah, one thing I would say though is, even if you were familiar with Protoss and you kind of got thrown in on the spot, at least like take a look at the maps or something beforehand, so you're not scouting in the wrong location. Like maybe if he got his probe there a little bit sooner, he could have got that pylon and cannon up again sooner before the lings got out. He could have done some damage, but well, because I mean, he sent it you know, top left, I'm pretty left. confident, Snipe, that you cannot cannon rush an overpool. <laughs> I mean, right? Well, I I've done it before. And you have killed the hatchery, yeah. And killed you're the hatchery. Disgusting. You're, you're a disgusting Protoss player, Snipe. Should be ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it was uh, that guy Python was trying to help out. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, uh, so he is teching up. I mean, he's getting a core. He's got a couple cannons around his nexus, so he's not gonna die to these few lings. But Desmond has an expansion. He's mining from both. He's got a lair coming up. Uh, I definitely like his position better. I mean, he's had in supply of the failed cannon rush cost crackery a fair bit. Yeah, I mean, there's not much follow-up to this. Because like I said, if his cannons had been placed, uh, you know, where the natural is, he could spend the 400 minerals he saved up for a nexus. And at least he's in a pretty strong economic spot, right? But, I mean, in, in this situation, there's not much he can do. He's really behind. He's, he's seven supply down from a Zerg player. And Protoss never want to be in that situation. Yeah, he's he's trapped in his base essentially at this point. I mean, there's only four lings there. <laughs> How lost is by he, four is there? Oh my god. He's gonna set, try and send this probe out, but it's just gonna die to these lings. So. Oh, it somehow slips past four lings. Okay, okay. I don't know if he's just gonna go scout. That. Huh? Um, he is getting a Stargate up. So if Desmond isn't prepared for this, he can maybe get a few Overlord kills and try and get back into the game a little bit. Oh, well, the Spire's already halfway done, so I think by uh, the time a course yeah. is out, maybe he'll get like one Overlord. Or something like that. If he starts a course there right away. He's also making a couple of Dragoons. Hmm. The zealots. Normally you want mostly Zealots early on. Uh, I know there's like a specific things like if you are doing a one gate tech build you can get some dragoons. Um, 
I don't know, not a great position for the Protoss to be in here. Stuck on one base after that failed rush. And Zerg's just powering up here on two bases. Getting it in Mutas. I and think, a uh, you know, something I think Desmond might benefit from is going for a quicker gas. Because he's not taking it till now. Um, but had he gotten that second gas earlier, maybe it would have been able to enable him to um, go for Mutas again. Uh, but it looks to me like he's going to go for just Mass Hydra. Yeah. Off of he is uh, he is getting some Scourge, too, to pick off <laughs> at Sarah, So He's also taking the, the expansion at the 6 o'clock. Um, so I guess he's trying to hide it because the normal expansions you want to be taking would be um, the mineral only above your nat and the base above that in the top left-hand corner. Yeah, that's... I think that's a normal expansion pattern on this map is, you know, top, bottom left, you ex kind of expand up and then over. So that 12 o'clock base would actually be Zerg's fifth base Wait, kind of deal. What? But this is fine. So there was oh. a, a Corsair chasing Scourge for a second. That was, that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> that's usually not how it, how it works. <laughs> okay, the first Zerg goes down. There's another one harassing this Overlord. Uh, don't see if there's any... Scourge out, but he's making a bunch of Hydralisks now. And what does Cracker even have to defend this? A couple of cannons and a few units. Yeah, I mean, once once there's like 12 Hydralisks with like range and speed, I think he's just going to be able to bulldoze his way through and, and kind of just take the game with um, oh, confidence. And he just lost the other, lost the other Sarah to another couple of Scourge. Bit unfortunate. Yeah. So he is trying to take an expansion now. Uh, a couple of pylons. So if he can get those cannons up, like, he's got enough minerals, he could make six cannons right now. If he gets those cannons up in time... I mean, he'd maybe... have to make a lot of cannon snipe. Because mm -hmm. there's there's about to be a pretty good number of Hydralis, and he doesn't have a Citadel or Templar Archives anywhere on the map, so... And they're actually both moving out with their units, too. Oh, yeah, that might be a mistake. Protoss should not be moving here. out. They're just kind of kind of meet here in the middle of the map. Oh, man. Yeah, it's not looking too good for Crackery. Um, only now is he starting to throw down one single cannon at his front. He's had a lot of minerals for a good number of, um, for a good while, so. Yeah, these cannons are definitely late. They could have been added much sooner. He's adding a few more now, but if Desmond is on top of this and, you know, keeps rallying over Hydras and is quick enough, uh, I think he's just going to be able to break through here. Yeah, this, sh this should be it. I mean, four Dragoons, three unmorphed cannons, which is all these Hydralists. Yeah, it's. That's it, that's the game. So, I mean, Crackery showing his inexperience in Protoss vs. Zerg for sure. Um, but, a bit unfortunate, but, you know, props to him. Good for him for subbing in, stepping in for his team when, you know, his teammate couldn't make it, make the game. Yeah, no he shame. never showed up. No shame so. in that. I think he played pretty well. And, you know, maybe if he wants to pursue PvZ in the future, I think he'd be he'd be a natural at it. <laughs> He's already got the uh, the tricky plays and the tricky builds down pretty well so two quick series there yeah i think we've casted four games already and i'm not sure any of them have lasted more than 10 minutes yeah yeah they've all been like pretty short games so yeah, far pretty pretty they're decisive cool. games which which i like um i like to see because i think like a common like a common concept or notion of lower level players is they're not aware of how big their advantages are so a lot of times players might be ahead 100 supply and they never push for the win. But I like what I'm seeing, you know. Um, a lot of aggression early and people going for decisive attacks and plays. Mm 